Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Daphne Weisham for EarthBeat. Today we're discussing the nuclear disaster in Fukushima, Japan, in the aftermath of one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded. We're joined by Harvey Wasserman. He is the editor of nukefree.org and the author of the book Solartopia. Welcome to the Real News Network, Harvey. Oh, great to be with you, Daph. So, Harvey, let's start with the latest information that we have coming out of Fukushima. How many reactors exactly are in a state of crisis? Well, we know at least four are, it may be more. The problem is we can't be really 100% uh, certain that we're getting the full story from the Japanese government and the industry, and we're not even 100% certain that they know what's going on. So uh, it's a really serious situation. We know at least two reactors have had explosions, and at least two have had seawater poured into them, which is really a, um, a desperate measure of last resort. It's not a good sign that they're pouring in seawater. We think they're going to do it to a third, and who knows what else. I think it's also important to remember that there could be another earthquake. Very often when you have a, a big earthquake like this, uh, others follow, and uh, we can see what, what kind of disaster that will be. Now, one of the situations that people are keeping a close eye on is the spent fuel uh, that is sitting outside of these reactor vessels. And in some cases, we're seeing steam possibly re rising from the spent fuel rods. Do you know why is that such a dangerous situation, Harvey? Well, I got to tell you, Daphne, I was in Japan in 1975, 76, and 78. These things were, at, were dis discussed. This is not a, a, exactly a surprise here. We were told by the Japanese government that these things could not happen. The uh, opposition to these plants did raise these issues. Now, you have spent fuel at these plants. Uh, under some designs, the spent fuel is actually on top, in the top of the containment. Uh, there's some people believe some of the spent fuel may have actually broken and fell into the core. We don't know about that. There also may be spent fuel outside, and of course this could have been hit by the tsunami. It's very poorly managed, the spent fuel, at all reactors all over the world, since there's no solution for the nuclear waste problem. If steam is coming off these spent fuel pools, then we have a serious problem, because this spent fuel has enough energy in it to actually cause an explosion on its own with huge radiation releases. So not only are we concerned about the cores in these reactors, we're also concerned about the spent fuel rods. Now the reactors are manufactured by General Electric, which of course is a U.S. Uh, corporation, and they are, what, for almost 40 years old, correct? Well, actually one of them is 40 years old, um, uh, and General Electric, uh, of course, uh, began as a, an American corporation. It still has American uh, assets, but the nuclear division is owned uh, by a Japanese corporation, as is Westinghouse. The two major purveyors of American nuclear power plants are actually owned by Japanese now. And, you know, after Chernobyl, the nuclear industry said, oh, that was just the Soviets. They don't know what they're doing. We understand uh, nuclear technology. Well, the Japanese are certainly on a par or better uh, than the American industry, and, and they can't handle this at all. So the, this, the most serious part of the situation, as far as we can tell, is that we don't know how serious the situation really is. And the people operating the plants probably don't know how serious the situation is. Now, one of the things that uh, we've learned is that the French embassy has actually released an, a memo suggesting that its citizens evacuate from Japan and that if there is an explosion or a continuing meltdown at the Fukushima reactors, that it could contaminate all of Tokyo within a matter of hours. Do you know more about this memo, Harvey? Yeah, Harvey? see, uh, well, you know, my suggestion is the French, that given the state of their nuclear industry, they might consider evacuating France. I mean, uh, but uh, they are concerned. They understand uh, the, the ramifications here. Fukushima is somewhere between 170 and 200 miles from Tokyo, and it is absolutely credible that a major radiation release could force the evacuation of Tokyo. Just as uh, you know, we have t uh, four reactors in California on or near major earthquake faults, and uh, the San, San Onofre plant is not far, much closer to Los Angeles than Fukushima is to Tokyo. And I got to tell you that if a 9.0 uh, earthquake had hit a San Onofre, we'd be watching video now of uh, people evacuating Los Angeles. 
And so that, that's how serious this is. Now, one of the things that's uh, fairly unusual, as I understand it, about one of these reactors is that uh, it was in the process of, of using plutonium as a source of fuel. Can you explain um, that situation and why, if there's a meltdown involving plutonium and MOX, and exactly what MOX is, um, why that would be a serious situation, uh, even more so than, a, the, than your average uh, well, nuclear meltdown? Well, you know, the great geniuses that have put together the nuclear industry decided as a selling point that they would take uh, fuel uh, from uh, old weapons. And uh, the anti-nuclear movement has been warning that this is a serious liability, it's expensive, and also it has plutonium in it. Plutonium is the most lethal substance known to humankind. If you ingest, breathe in just a tiny, tiny particle of plutonium, it can cause uh, lung cancer. And uh, my understanding is one of the Fukushima reactors has MOX fuel in it, a mixed oxide is what it's called. And if this particular stuff burns and sends particulates into the atmosphere, then you're really, really talking about a whole other order of magnitude of health danger because anything with plutonium in it is going to be uh, many times more lethal than, uh, than the, the usual stuff coming out of a nuclear plant, which is, of course, bad enough to begin with. Now, we're hearing that the U.S. military is actually uh, picking up signs of radiation on their ships. Uh, within yes, 100 miles to sea. 100 miles at sea. And, and of course, uh, as you mentioned, Tokyo is 140 miles away from uh, Fukushima? It's, uh, between 170 and 200. Uh, there, there are two sites at Fukushima. Uh, one has six reactors, one has four. And they are right on the ocean. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the tsunami just kept came pouring in there as it would, by the way, at Diablo Canyon in San Onofre in California. The mileage to Tokyo is, um, you know, for a small radiation release may be okay, but a large radiation release, if there is very clear that the radiation will go to Tokyo. And um, in fact, the radiation from Chernobyl um, uh, came to California within 10 days and went across the northern tier of the United States after covering all of Europe. So uh, the, the one of the killer aspects, unfortunately, of radiation emissions for nuclear plants is that they do go all over the world. Thank you for joining us, Harvey Wasserman, editor of NukeFree.org, author of Solartopia on the Real News Network and Earthbeat. I'm Daphne Weisham. Thank you for watching.